TV wouldn't play our video because we made a video one time called Stranger to Danger and we sent it off to MTV to see if they would play it and they sent us back a letter telling us how great it was, how good the production and how great the quality of the music was and they said there was some words that were offensive to them and if we changed the words they'd play the video. The words were Jesus is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Well that's ridiculous. We don't even have to pray about that. That's the truth. You know? have to pray about whether to change that. We can't change that. That's the fact. That's not persecution. That's just the world doing what the Bible said the world would do. When Rolling Stone's Rolling Stone magazine reviewed one of my records and said, boy, this guy has just got to have God. He just needs that crutch. But that's not persecution, see? Because it doesn't matter to me what Rolling Stone thinks. They don't think there's a hell, but they'll find out. <laughs> and so we, so we pray for those people because we know it's not their fault that they're in darkness and we do everything we can to shine the light into their lives. But it is persecution when somebody that you love and look up to, who is your elder, who you know to be a godly person and a good person, falls into judgment or condemnation and starts pointing the finger at other Christians. Now, the Bible tells us not to do that. The Bible says if you have a problem with a brother, you go to him in private. You don't uh, write books about them, and you don't get on TV in front of 10 or 15 or 30 million people and start putting them down. You go to them in private. But we have an opportunity now, praise God, we have an opportunity to not do the same thing. Because those people are good people. And the devil hates those people and he wants to destroy them. And instead of us helping him, we're going to pray for them and we're going to love them in the name of Jesus. Amen? We're going to forgive anybody that makes a mistake because we've made mistakes. We're going to show mercy to those people because we need God's mercy. It took me a long time to learn that lesson, and I still struggle with it sometimes. But you see, I am tempted, and I, by the way, made a lot of mistakes before God revealed to me that that is his heart on the matter, and I can either do it or I can quit claiming to be a Christian because that's what Christ does. And I'm a hypocrite if I don't do that too. But you see, when Jesus was persecuted, he not only had the temptation of speaking out because his mind was greater than theirs and he knew all things and he even knew what they were thinking and he could have tied them in knots. He not only stopped his disciples from fighting against the people who had come to take him, but he stood there, he, he kneeled, knelt down in the garden of Gethsemane and prayed, Father, he knew the future. He knew that they were going to beat him in the face. He knew that they were going to put a crown of thorns on his head. He knew that they were going to beat him with the cat of nine tails. He knew that they were going to put those nails in his hands and in his feet. That they were going to stab him in the side. He knew that they were going to make fun of him and cast lots for his clothes. That they were going to try to humiliate him. But unlike you and I, he could have called forth ten million angels and he could have called down lightning out of heaven and killed them all. And instead of not doing anything to him on top of that, he said, Father, forgive them. They don't know that I am your son. They really don't know what they're doing. That they're helping you with your perfect plan of salvation so that when Malin comes to me and repents, that you can forgive him. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord God. I didn't have any hope. I made a couple million dollars. I had the things the world says are good. I had quote unquote success. But my marriage was broke up. My relationship with my child and my mom and dad and my brothers and sisters. I was having to take cocaine and heroin to put up with myself. But I was a success. Thank God that I have 
a choice and that I can refuse what the world calls success. And I can humble my heart and walk with God. And he's not only forgiven me, but that was the beginning, thank God. And from this day forward, I can learn and receive of this new life in Christ. See, all the old life has passed away now. And all things have become brand new. And more and more each day, I'm learning His ways. And God wants to teach them to you too. That's why He sent His Holy Spirit to lead us into all truth and to teach us His ways. We're going to sing you a song about this last winter and about this time of testing. What the Lord revealed to us was that even in those hard times, when everybody else thinks, oh, everything's going okay, we were on stage in front of hundreds of thousands of people. We made records and we made videos and CDs and cassettes. But in our heart of hearts, we may have looked like we were standing like stone, but we were crying. I pray that the Lord will speak to you through this song. It says that these times are for our growth.
bless your holy name. Holy righteous Son, we exalt you. Worthy is the Lamb to be praised. Bless you. Bless you, Lord. Bless you, Lord. Bless you, Jesus. Amen. I don't know what's going on in your life, but I do know this. I know that the Holy Spirit of God, when Jesus went back to heaven, the Word of God tells us that Jesus told his disciples, you should be glad that I'm going now because my Father and I are going to send His Spirit. The Holy Spirit of God no longer lives in the temple in Jerusalem that Solomon built. We read all through the Old Testament how the people came into that room, came into His presence, and He spoke to people. The Bible says now, though, that His Spirit lives in your heart, your body, becomes the temple of the Holy Spirit when you accept Jesus Christ. And we know that God has the power to set us free. And we also know that that is His will. There is no doubting that because the reason that Jesus said He came to the earth was to heal the brokenhearted, to set the captive spirit free, to take the blindness from the eyes of men that they might see and know the truth to take the oppression off of people. God does not want his people oppressed. He doesn't want us living in fear. He doesn't want our bodies sick and dying. He doesn't want our marriages ending in divorce. He doesn't want us putting up with people that we're living with because we've got a piece of paper that we don't love. He wants to teach us how to walk in peace and love and patience as we wait on Him to return. We have within us the power. I don't know why God chose to do it that way. Why didn't He just let the Holy Spirit sort of float around in the air and be mysterious? Why did He choose to take this awesome power of God and place it in these flimsy little frail, scared little childlike people that we call Christians? Because he wants to teach us how to rise up in the name of God and, and be the true priests and kings that he called us to be. Not a bunch of wimps. But to teach us how to put away childish things. And it brings glory to him that in our weakness his strength is made perfect. You know what you have to do in order to accomplish his will? You have to let it happen. His Spirit lives in you. You've got to read that Word and you've got to meditate on it and you've got to realize that it's the truth, not just with your mind and your intellect, but with your spirit to the point where you start speaking it and believing it because when you do that, let me tell you, man, God will set you free. And He'll set your family free and He'll set people free where you go to school and where you go to work. And he'll give you peace. You got nothing to be afraid of. When you accept Jesus Christ, it's not a spirit of fear you're given, but a spirit of power and love and a sound mind, and you got nothing to be afraid of. He said you don't have to fear even if you walk through the valley of the shadow of death. You can fear no evil because God said, I will be with you. So why are Christians depressed? How do we get obsessed? Why do we allow the evil one to come to steal our love and our joy and our peace? The Bible says the evil one comes to steal and kill and destroy. But he can't do it unless you let him because he that's in you is stronger than he that's in the world. It's for a lack of knowledge of God that have people perish and for lack of a vision. Without the vision, without a vision, the people perish. Seek God and he will give you your specific purpose for your life. That's the truth. He will equip you to do it too. You may be young, man. You may be thinking, well, when I get older, I'll do that. Let me tell you something, young people. God's no respecter of persons. And His power will dwell in you if you're 14, just like it will if you're 45. And you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. You can accomplish the will of God. 
When I got born again, my daughter was 11 years old, and my daughter ministered to me as much as Billy Graham because the power of God flowed in her life. We don't know when and we don't know how, but we know Jesus is coming. Nobody knows when. He's coming to get a bride that is holy and prepared. We came to encourage you to get ready. Remember what John the Baptist said? He said, I, I'm just a voice crying in the wilderness. Prepare your hearts. Jesus is coming. Well, he did. And I believe that we are called to go all into the world and teach and preach and make disciples and to tell the world, get ready, Jesus is coming. The Bible says on the day that he comes that it's going to be like lightning flashing across the sky. And I hope that you'll pray with me that Jesus will come soon and crack the sky.